Okay, welcome back to the Apocalypse Chronicles, or the Chronicles of the Apocalypse, that thing that is slowly creeping up on us. So let's have a cup of coffee first, first thing in the morning, freshly brewed with an instrument that didn't need any battery power, solar power, or electricity. It's the Gilly Kettle. Some of you guys know about this. This is a handy piece of equipment for survival, for camping, or... If you happen to be like us, which we're not really outdoors orientated, we are more just survival orientated, I will be talking about this because it was an investment. But first, I'm going to show you the uh, scavengers I found this week. Okay, so spade head and a fork head, yes. And we put some handles on it, yeah. A fork handle and a spade handle, which I bought off Amazon. So this thing dug up out of the garden, believe it or not. Yes, look, it's a little bit skanky, but never mind. One of the tangs is a bit short, but it's an ash handle, which cost about £8 off Amazon. Rather than paying £27 for a fork, what we've done is uh, repaired them, yeah, along with this. So you have a D handle for the spade, and then for the fork handle which you know about these fork handles, don't you, if you're English and you know the uh, two Ronnies, yeah. A fork handle. Yes, and I did do a ring around and they did have a laugh when I asked for a fork handle. Yeah, that was on purpose. So anyway, the next uh, scab find here, which was uh, next to a dumpster skip. I don't know why we call it dumpsters, but oh yeah, American thing. Planter boxes, which is really needed along with a large box. You can never do without too many of them. So here we go. That is an old vacuum cleaner uh, tub. And then, of course, the pram as well, which you've seen before. It's a container, holds earth. You can plant things in it, can't you? And this is what it's all about, container planting on the cheap. And I mean, we're doing this for nothing at all. But this one has failed now. The Teflon has come out of here. So what we have here is a uh, planter tray <laughs> with uh, uh, thermal uh, control, if we wish, plus another tray and a lid as well. Okay, so that will be adapted pretty shortly for the garden. This is the this is the one. Okay, I was looking for a knife. I happened to mention it uh, to a guy at work, and he said, "Yeah, I've got an old scout's knife. Do you want it?" I thought, yeah, okay, give me a description. I thought, yeah, I know that. I used to have one of these when I was in Scouts years and years ago. This is from the 1970s. Look, that is how you measure six inches, so that is about a five-inch blade, okay? Quite nice. Uh, just as a hint there, the thumb to small finger spread out is nine inches, okay? Six inches and nine inches. It's an old Egyptian measurement, isn't it? Yeah, so look at this, aluminium. Uh, rosewood and brass with a decent steel blade on it and yes it is a bit skanky it's a little bit old but it's worth it and i got that uh, for an exchange as well so that's nice okay so that saved me 30 odd quid which is 30 pounds to you commoners yeah the thing is i don't want to spend 200 dollars on a decent hunting knife and what i was looking for was something quality that didn't cost too much as you see, the name Jack Pike here, which unfortunately on Amazon, nothing there currently unavailable. However, we do have an Army Navy stores, Beckett's in Norwich, found them and they do have a collection of Jack Pike knives. So there is one here for £37. Not bad collection, but this has saved me some cash. So uh, it's one of those things you could say the universe will provide, but it's a matter of communication with people. This is something I had when I was a teenager, so it's come back to me. Anyway, let's go on to the investment. This is a Gilly Kettle. Some people uh, know it as a Kelly Kettle. This basically is a survival camping piece of equipment, which is a volcano kettle. Okay, so it has a water jacket round it, and you have a uh, fire which heats quite a large surface area at the end of the day. It's got the young man here, he's uh, cutting up small bits of pallet wood to burn in there. You can use twigs and leaves, anything that's combustible, you can use to fuel this kettle. You don't need electricity or any type of... Uh, hydrocarbon so what i want to do is give a shout out to forby.co.uk uh, that do camping equipment now this is not sponsored these uh, people i know they do land rover stuff and camping stuff so uh, this is where i bought it from for 77 pounds okay links will be below but you see here i actually used a dog bowl to stop burning the uh, decking and it boils very quickly. If you're using low-grade fuels, maybe up to 10 minutes, but you get a whistle with it. Yep, yeah, so that's a nice piece of equipment here. And as you can see, the fire 
is in the middle okay so as i said it's got a large area to heat the water and it does exactly what it's supposed to do this is a very efficient kettle you don't have to plug it into the wall and this is what we're using for when we get power cuts you see here using clean wood it can always be used for potash on the garden afterwards and it's not just for making coffees and teas because we do drink a lot of beverages but we can also have hot water for washing and for doing washing up as well just using pallet wood so yeah there are different selections of these kettles hard anodized silver anodized and aluminium okay and I, I can't tell you all about it in this video because it'll be long-winded but you can do your research basically they come as kits as well so you can have a camping kit or you can buy the accessories separate but uh, it's a buyer's market the bonus here is that it's made in the UK now you've heard of the Kelly kettle I'm sure you've uh, watched Canadian prepper he's uh, reviewed this this one is made in the UK which means we shouldn't have supply problems now actually I'll just show you this as a young man um, quite clever he was uh, using the other end of the axe to uh, tenderize the pallet wood and to make small bits which is uh, the same as emulating uh, twigs and the such like okay there is an adapter which we're looking for now the uh, pot support which goes on the top of the kettle for putting a pan on so you can actually cook directly to it okay and it literally looks like this it's just two pieces of uh, laser cut aluminium but you slot them together and away you go you can put it on the top okay so these are available in the uk you don't have to worry about uh, imports as i said you can buy them from off amazon or four before or directly from their website and i'll put the links below i'll just show you here using the other side of the x this is vital this is vital now because if we have power cuts or the power energy supplies go up too much then you're going to have to resort to other things and this is one way that you can find scavenge fuel from anywhere and use it to boil water which is vital okay without hot water you won't survive will you okay so yeah that is a uh, kitchen outside the downside is if it rains we've got problems but the other thing here pot ash which is about 10 percent of burnt wood which is the white stuff is good for the garden as well there is a design fault with this gilly kettle because the chimney is at the top where the handle goes be careful when you pick it up because you could burn yourself right so percy thrower do you remember percy thrower that means you're quite old i remember him when i was a kid we used to call our neighbors who did gardening percy throwers and there's Alan Titchmarsh, and there's a plethora of people on the internet that are teaching you how to garden, which it seems to be now that the BBC are starting to promote gardening, and it's uh, show and grow type of things that they announce on the radio. They're trying to get people greener, but there is a, an agenda behind it because they want people to grow food, don't they? They know what's coming. So, yeah, got the trays. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm mixing... Uh, soil with the uh, peat at the moment until i've made some compost now i do have an issue with uh, all sorts of uh, lack of knowledge and one of those is spacing plants together okay so i put these two together and i thought no that's not right they're too close these are a little bit better these are going to grow out quite large and i think the tomatoes are a little bit too close as well but as i've told you before as i'll keep telling you i don't know what i'm doing i'm just making up as i go along and getting some sort of results so you can see they're actually growing now they've got the root space compared to what was in the pot and uh, another thing i learned is that beans will put nitrogen back into the soil which is vital so i think this is the first thing that you grow is beans now these are courgettes and i'm going to uh, put just one flower or one plant into this uh, planter I, I changed my mind when i thought about it I thought no actually well I'll put that in there and have it so it's got its own space enough space for roots and hopefully that will grow big enough and it does just depend on how much root uh, area they have to how big they're going to grow so there we go some little uh, bell peppers and we've got some tomatoes now I made another mistake here you're supposed to trim some of the stalks off the tomato plants and I don't know how to do it somebody mentioned it you do it bit by bit you take little bits out so it helps to uh, have the plant grow now i've been having a little bit of trouble with things dying turning yellow 
and some things are growing okay so there's a bell pepper it's uh, actually growing quite well it's got room to grow and i had a little bit of a disaster here i had to take some spuds out now there's mint growing underneath here that is absolutely prolific so i'll take that out of the way they're all uh, mint roots now the potatoes i took out of the bag that i grew is those which is about one potato size isn't it okay so that bag's gone they're turning yellow I don't know whether it's a lack of water, lack of nutrients, this I don't know, this is the next bit of research, but I've lost uh, two bags worth, actually three, okay, because that one's dying off as well, which isn't right, they're not ready to be dug up yet. So the French beans, they've got hairy leaves, yeah, strange that, it's uh, pest proof, this is the one that broke and it's repaired itself and decided to carry on growing, okay. I think the rule of gardening is use anything you can to make things grow, including the net. So I'm cheating here, actually. I uh, bought some basil from a shop and planted it. And I've learned that planting for survival, if you don't know what you're doing, just plant the hell out of everything. Okay, so out of five seeds there, two are good, one's growing and two are not growing. Okay, so it, that is just the way it seems to be. And these are all uh, cucumbers starting to pop out but i planted all those we'll see which are good which are healthy if not we'll chuck the ones that aren't away and that is it at the end of the day rather than trying to get prize roses what you're trying to do is grow food as i said before and i'll keep saying it i'm learning and uh, this is a really big learning curve and lots of work so now i understand very clearly why farmers and gardeners like the rain so much yeah we've had a hot spell for the last couple of days that's dried the plants out and the earth out a bit now we've got some water which is brilliant this is what england's about green and pleasant land so we have rain and sunshine in the summer let's see what happens in the winter time mild winter hopefully don't know how you feel about the way things are at the moment the way things are going crazy it seems that our leaders really don't know what they're doing some countries are starting to flourish the ones with resources the ones that has or the one that has been sanctioned is actually doing a lot better than the west okay now what i'm finding is that i'm having to work longer hours to have the same standard of living which means i have to do an extra day every two weeks to pay for fuel there is of course the added anxiety of this trade falling to pieces it's getting bad in america for spare parts for trucks from what i understand at the moment we are okay but they're not producing the trucks because they can't get the chips and the order books are full but they can't supply the lorries which is worrying in itself but we'll see how it goes I know you probably think I'm bragging when I'm showing you instruments, but this is another way that you can supplement your income or make things or make ends meet is just recycle stuff or do trading. Now, this knife, I was going to invest. You could say half a day's wages for a knife, whereas this has cost me about £7 in total with a trade, and it is a beautiful knife, which is practical and useful for myself planting again it is critical to learn skills like this as we go into uh, high inflation fuel shortages expensive fuel and food shortages you're gonna have to make it up however you can do it and gardening and hunting scavenging and working longer hours it just seems as this is what we're doing as we head towards a large apocalypse Anyway, I'm always curious to know what you're up to. Leave comments below or even links to videos of stuff you're up to. Okay? Anyway, see you later.